What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all doing well. Today I'm taking a look at Fractal Design's very first liquid-cooled AIO here in the United States. This is the Celsius S24. There's the Celsius S36, which is the triple 120 version, and I'm dealing today with the S24, again, the 240 millimeter variant. So very exciting stuff here. Um, this is more or less an Asatec uh, design when you're talking uh, internally, so there's nothing too innovative going on under the hood here. Um, you are dealing with a DC pump, pretty standard, and a ceramic bearing. And there's also a bit of a sound dampening material under the hood here, which theoretically should make the pump quieter. I have tested this already. I've already plugged it in and, and ran the tests. It is very quiet. So we'll, we'll take a look at the fans in, in just a moment and how those sound. From an aesthetic standpoint, Fractal hasn't taken too many risks here. It's, it's fairly basic and straightforward. You might call it a little boring, but I actually don't mind it. I like some of my components to be boring. Uh, like the AIO, for instance. This is a personal preference of mine, but this also sort of ties in with Fractal's Scandinavian minimalist design or whatever you want to call it. Uh, so if you look at the water block, it's kind of this circular thing and it's it's glossy. It's black and glossy, which I don't know. I, I prefer matte with everything. This is just a personal preference, of course. Uh, but you get this, the snowflake. You get the nice little Fractal snowflake just peeking out on the side there. And then look at there's two words. There's two words around the edges here, auto and PWM the hell is that? So there's no software that comes included or is available for download on Fractal's website. There's no software at all when it's uh, when it comes to tuning or controlling this thing. So it's all hardware based. And basically this circular ring, this sort of soft touch circular ring that goes around the water block is adjustable. You can move it, switching it from auto to PWM. You switch it between those two settings. Auto basically makes the fans run at anywhere from 1900 to 2000 RPM is what I was seeing in hardware monitor, which at that speed, these fans are are silent, not really quiet. They're like, I mean, like I can't hear them from 10 inches away on an open air test bed. They're that quiet. So when I was running it at auto initially, I was like, oh my God, temperatures are gonna be awful. It's just, it's, it's, it's too quiet. It's too quiet. Actually not, uh, 77, no, 7600K, our Core i5, which I had overclocked to 4.8 gigahertz. We fired up GTA 5 at 1440p, uh, 2560 by 1440p, 16 by nine, and 72, no, 73 degrees Celsius. Celsius, uh, 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 73 degrees C on a fairly heavily overclocked 7600K, which I am pretty happy about. Uh, with an ambient in my room of 26 degrees Celsius, give or take a degree, uh, that's actually not too bad at all. Um, and then we, uh, I switched over to PWM, especially at just how quiet at that at that noise level. I was just sort of blown away, uh, pun intended. Um, and then PWM. When you switch it over to PWM, the fans crank up to around 3,000 RPM. So they're uh, at that point they're audible, and you can definitely hear them even through a case, especially if your your case isn't tailored for silence to begin with. It's got a lot of open mesh and things like that. Uh, then you can hear it, but it's not obtrusive and it's not annoying, especially if you've got any sort of in-game audio coming through your headphones or your speakers, it's not gonna bother you. Um, at least it didn't bother me at all, so it's not too bad. However, uh, temperatures, when you look at the thermals, running the same test in GTA 5 after about 20 minutes, only decreased thermals on our CPU by one degree. We went from 73C with the auto setting to 72 on the PWM setting. So um, really not worth it to go PWM, in my opinion, at least from my testing on the S24, I would just leave it at auto, and never change it again. Just stick it in, install it, it's good to go. Uh, but that's, uh, that's, that's, a good, that's a good sign. This thing definitely can cool a fairly um, highly overclocked CPU, which is honestly the most important part of any AIO IMO. <laughs> now the fairly thick tubing, which is rubberized, is not kinky, which in this case, is a good thing. And uh, I, I really like the way it looks. They've sleeved it with some nice sort of nylon or you know cloth material sleeving, uh, much better than the metal spiral crap that was on the Kelvins. That was just, ooh, that was special. Um, but this looks really nice, I, I will say. And of course, it's nice to be, even if you're in a cramped case uh, and you gotta like squish things together like in the M case M1 or something like that, uh, there is not gonna be too much kinkage with this rubber material. Uh, now, also, if we look at the ends of the tubing, we see that there are these like fittings on either side going from to the water block and to the radiator, but only the, the fittings, only the G and a quarter inch fittings on the radiator are removable. So this is an expandable loop. However, you're limited in that you can only remove this end of the tubes. You're pretty much stuck, that means, with this tubing. Which also means if you were to expand this and add in like a reservoir and additional radiators or a GPU, 
you might have some clashing tubing. You'd be stuck with this one, and then you might have some just other tubing that doesn't look anything like this, unless you can find this exact tubing, which if you don't care about what your custom water-cooled system looks like, then by all means. But most of us who are gonna spend the premium on custom water-cooled parts probably want it to look all matchy-matchy and stuff. So it's just a little confusing to me why Fractal would allow this side to be removed, but fix the other end. I just, uh, I'm a little, a little per perplexed by that. Now that being said, Fractal gets huge points for adding on this built-in PWM fan splitter straight onto the radiator. It's a great idea. You've got these two dynamic X2 fans. These are Fractal's in-house fans. They're not quite Venturi's, but they do a killer job. Anyway, um, two of these fans that are black and white, of course, and they route straight onto that fan splitter, the uh, PWM connection, and then you've got a third cable that actually sneakily and invisibly routes underneath the sleeving of one of these tubes straight to the water block, and then all of those connections get boiled down to this one single black CPU PWM four pin connector. That was a mouthful, uh, which plugs straight into the CPU fan header on your motherboard. So really this is a, a very nice sort of elegant solution to clean up cable management. This is all wired up good to go, guys. All you do is install it. You just screw this to the top or the front of your case or whatever. You bolt this down to your CPU. All the cables, all the wiring's done. All you gotta do is plug this one cable in, fans, pump, everything's good to go. Uh, the only thing that, that might scare some people or, or might concern them is can that one CPU fan header on the motherboard actually power and control all of these various elements? Yes, I think it can. Uh, the fans, honestly, even the pump does not take much power. Uh, the CPU fan header, I'm sure any of those fan headers can handle um, the amount of voltage required to run these effectively. So I don't think that's an issue. Until further testing shows otherwise, I probably wouldn't worry about it, guys. But um, on that note, let's move on to the other thing. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the radiator itself. Again, 240 millimeters, it is 30 millimeters thick, and it looks to have some pretty decent fin density. It's more or less standard. It looks kind of like the H100i, which is not a bad thing at all. And it's kind of just got a nice little finish. There's some like lettering here, like a model number, it just kind of looks, I don't know, it looks very industrial. It looks good, man. This is a cool little AIO, and honestly, literally, uh, we don't I, don't, I don't have much else to say. I think, the installation. Installation was super easy. Again, I keep comparing this to the H100i because it is sort of a direct competitor. Pretty much the exact same installation process as the H100i. In fact, you could even use the uh, mounting accessories from the H100i with this and it would still work perfectly fine. It's like the same OEM, Asetek and all that jazz. So uh, installation is really a breeze. Speaking of installation, I didn't mention this at the beginning of the video, but this is also uh, offering Ryzen support straight out of the box. So that's nice. Um, I probably already included a B-roll shot of that at the beginning, but just to mention it for validation, yes, it does support Ryzen. So that's, that's cool too. Overall, I'm 95% sure that I like this cooler. Uh, granted, it's got some weird quirks, don't get me wrong. Like, you know, not being able to remove the tubing on this end and the sort of stiff locking or the stiff mechanism that goes around the, the water block for, for Justin PWM and Auto, that's a little bit weird. But for the most part, this does a fine job of cooling my Core i5-7600K with even some additional headroom there thermally uh, to push it a bit further. If I wanted to hit that nice five gigahertz mark, I'm pretty sh confident that this thing could do it. And, uh, and it does so while, while staying very quiet, especially on the, uh, specifically on the auto setting. Just auto it and it, it is super quiet, it's super good, it's super cool and good. In the end, I would say this is a successful debut on Fractal Design's part, uh, delivering their first AO to the US, and it stays fairly competitive with other offerings at its current price point. But that's gonna do it for now, guys. Let me know what you think of this thing in the comments below. Also, feel free to toss me a like on the video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe to the channel for more tech stuff if you haven't already. Also, check out Bitwood Ultra, my ad-free early access channel. You thought I was gonna forget, didn't you? <laughs> I did not. Um, check that out. It's uh, first two weeks are completely free, and it's a buck fifty a month, very cheap, and all that jazz. Have a good one, guys. I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye. I'm gonna go edit this video now. I hate my life. No, I have a great life. I got this for free.